Namaste friends, Jeanette Seely here, and I am a yoga therapist and a licensed massage therapist who has been bringing yoga to healthcare settings for more than 26 years. I have worked with people at the end of their lives, with birth, with people who are recovering from trauma, injury, chronic illness, special needs kids. I adore the way that yoga brings enlightened understanding of the human condition in a way that generates a sense of awareness and empowerment so that people in all stages and phases of life can benefit from this practice. I was inspired to create this 300 hour training to help yoga teachers, avid yoga students, and healthcare professionals understand the context of yoga as it exists in the ancient tradition outside of the normal yoga land studio model. And I've brought together some of my absolute favorite teachers, therapists, and practitioners who are stewards of the tradition to create this incredible program to develop your skill as a teacher in ways that most programs out there just don't do. You'll gain an understanding of anatomy, physiology, and biomechanics. You'll receive guidance in the ancient tradition. You'll learn about Ayurveda, the science of life, yoga sister science, in ways that are really accessible and kind of take the mystery out of the practice. You'll also go deeper into the modular experience of choosing your own adventure, of choosing pathways into yoga for perinatal care or yoga for end of life care, yoga in healthcare. It's such an incredible program. And we're sharing these teachings of yoga with great heart and great gratitude. And I welcome you to check it out and learn more. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions, and I look forward to serving you. Hi, everybody. My name is Swamini Shwadananda Saraswati, and um, I've been practicing yoga since I was in my early teens. I'm 58 now, and uh, yoga has meant different things to me at different points in time. It started off like most people. Um, it was a way for me to kind of channel my emotional energy as a youth um, coming from a very abusive household and not having the necessary tools to know what to do with the abuse that I was experiencing. Um, but then it transformed and it, it moved from this uh, way of channeling energy into a way of healing, um, was introduced to the deeper teachings, the Bhagavad Gita, the Devi, Mahatmya, and many of the other texts. And, and over time met my guru, um, Swami Adiyatmanandaji, who uh, is now Maha Samadhi, he, he's, he passed away last year, um, but had the chance to study with him deeply in India and have studied with other amazing teachers like Joseph LePage and oh, so many, and, uh, Scott Blossom and um, just so many amazing teachers. And the common thread that ran through everybody's teaching and the common thread that I shared with them was this not wanting to teach yoga as an exercise routine, there's enough of that in the world, um, but really, really intending to share the healing aspect of this practice with people so that they have a more um, in-depth understanding of the truth of this practice and the history of this practice and the longevity of this practice. And that it's not just about getting into your bikini, you know, um, or, or, you know, it's not even really about becoming more flexible physically. It's about becoming more flexible compassionately and empathetically and spiritually such that we can embrace more about ourselves and about those around us um, in a way that is patient and kind. And as such, we can open a pathway to the divinity as well, if that's what we choose to do. So I had my own health issues. Um, and that propelled me into learning deeply about the therapy of yoga. I started programs in local hospitals, including Deborah Heart and Lung Center, Community Medical Center. Um, I started the very first um, crisis intervention program in the state of New Jersey. I was partnered with 13 mental health organizations that worked with families in crisis and the children, particularly of those families. Um, and also started several school programs for special needs and at-risk youth, worked with gangs, worked with many, worked with the cancer community. Um, there's really no place that this doesn't 
fit, that this isn't a support. And so, you know, my, my message, if you do sh end up sharing this with students, my message to them would be, don't think small. Wherever you see suffering, that is where you bring this. Whether it's suffering in a, in a single person or in a larger community or in the world itself. The purpose of yoga is to alleviate suffering so that there can be a deeper connection. So focus on that and learn the skills necessary to bring this practice to the places where it's needed. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Harion and Jay Matati. Thanks, Amiriji. That was a wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful introduction and uh, lovely to hear about your practice. For me, I have, um, I was raised in a family with my grandfather was an Ayurveda healer. So I've kind of been immersed into Ayurveda since birth. Um, I say it's the only way I've known how to live is Ayurvedically, which is Ayurveda is the science of life. And I, what I really do is, uh, since I have this familiarity with Sanskrit and the Eastern scriptures and Shastra, my role is to make it comprehensible to the West in a principle-based fashion. What I mean to say is, instead of being very prescriptive, I feel like the first time when people get into some of these sciences, it comes with a lot of do's and don'ts, and we kind of lose the essence of the principles. So I, I, I live in New York City. I practice uh, with clientele all over the world. I teach at various organizations. I speak at various corporations. I write. But the heart of my work really lies in making this, taking this back to its authentic science and principles and making it applicable and undaunted. What he, uh, you know, and undaunting. And what really keeps me motivated in my work is that I learned that health was not the fear of sickness. When I was growing up and I grew up in an Ayurvedic household, I never felt like health was uh, a fear of disease. It was rather the freedom that comes from being well. And that's what I like to bring in my teachings is to awaken the intuition of the listener to trust that we have this inner intelligence that we carry and how can you connect that to the world around us and to make it practical, logical and comprehensible. Um, so in Jeanette's lovely program that you've put together, I'm just so impressed and pleased to see you know, authentic teachings and teachers being pulled together. This is exactly what's needed. Um, so I am teaching um, some, I'm sharing some uh, Sanskrit pronunciation and transliteration and teachings about karma from the tradition, the, the doctrine of karma, and um, some simple mantras for knowledge to help support the students. Um, in the whole journey that's knowledge-based. And they will be practicing the um, style of yoga that I teach, which is called Shri or Supreme Release Yoga. Um, so I don't know, I've been teaching um, yoga and much of what I call the full spectrum of the Vedic tradition now for about 21, 22 years. And my primary teachers are Pooja Swami Dayananda and Krishan Mantri. And um, so I would say if I would pick a word in this moment, that is kind of the core of what I do. It is really about revelation. So yoga as a practice of revelation, understanding dharma for the sake of revelation, whether it's through jyotisha or other means, um, even Ayurveda as a means of revelation, of revealing you know, one's natural state of health, and asana practice as a means of revealing the self of the self. Um, I, I think Swamini here has some similar um, lines in that I bring together the Advaita Vedanta and the feminine divine that extends from the Tantrika tradition in much of my teachings. And I do a lot of storytelling um, in all of my programs in order to share knowledge in a way that brings people's hearts um, 
and lives along for the ride. Um, I think the word revelation also applies to a lot of the work that I do to help kind of deconstruct um, a lot of the misgivings and misguided ideas um, about yoga in what I call yoga land in modern uh, westernized yoga land and help sort of uphold and be a part of the, the, the be a part of the timeless tradition of upholding what is yoga, which is what I love about what's happening in Jeanette's whole program. So I feel very passionate about, you know, bringing people back to what yoga is, those people who are truly seeking it. And um, so, yeah, that's a little bit of what I do. And um, my husband is a Jyotishi, he's a Vedic astrologer. And so we, we sort of work together in ways and help kind of inform each other in a lot of ways. And um, so, yeah, that also kind of comes into my work quite a bit because it's such a major part of our lives, you know, even just seeing what's the Lugna, you know, at a time of this kind of meeting or something like that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. I'm Melissa Smith and I have, I feel like, um, I feel like I've been in wellness also since birth. <laughs> so it's just one of those things. Um, I currently live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, but I have lived all over um, Texas and New Orleans and Calgary and Malaysia um, and all different places. And so it feels like I finally come home. So I moved to be closer to my father. And in that, um, my career trajectory has changed. I have continued to teach restorative and sustainable yoga practices um, for about 15 or so years now. Um, and uh, it's really been a sustaining part of my life. Um, I went through um, some of my own healing uh, about five or six years ago, having bilateral frozen shoulder. And one of the key ingredients for me to recover um, was restorative yoga in addition to laughter, not taking myself so seriously. Um, and really finding more time for connection for others and being outside. And it's interesting because I think um, similar to something that you all have said that yoga is not um, a recipe, um, but that we need to meet the individual where they're at. And so I feel like um, it's just a continual growth process for yoga. Um, because it continuously changes for me and meets me wherever I'm at at that time. So for this particular program, I'll be doing restorative yoga. Uh, the first module will be Shavasana, and the second will be a bit more just uh, in the overall aspects of restorative yoga and implementing that into a practice. Um, it's my favorite thing to teach. Um, my teachers were uh, Leanne Carey, Donna Farhi, um, Jules Mitchell, um, I could go on and on. So I've, I've, I've done a lot of different things throughout <laughs> throughout my life, um, but those are the teachers that have really kind of resonated the most with me. And then as um, I think as time goes on, you know, again, it just continues to change for me and meet me in different places that I never expected. And so that's what I hope to to bring to this particular training is understanding a sense of self agency um, and uh, the ability to say yes to your no, meaning it's okay to rest. Um, this process of busyness that we are all involved in um, isn't necessarily where we need to stay and that we can retreat and then recover and be stronger than we were before. So I'm excited to be here. So thank you Jeanette, for having me. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much, Jeanette, for inviting me. And I love getting to meet you all and see some familiar faces and sort of make this a bit more real for me now that I see some of the people that I'll be teaching with. Um, so I uh, come from a practice of yoga with somatics. Uh, my primary teacher is Patty Townsend. Uh, she developed a style of yoga called Embody Yoga, which takes the work of Barney Woodbridge Cohen, which is body-mind centering and weaves it into yoga. Um, 
And then uh, it was about maybe six or seven years ago, I did get a little bit, I would say, just disillusioned with what we were talking about a bit before about the sort of hyper popularity and hyper fixation on exercise and just the yoga culture. Um, and I pulled back from teaching yoga and it, I haven't been teaching heart much. I've been practicing quite a lot, but I haven't been teaching in the same kind of way. I'm instead focusing more on the somatic side. Um, and it, but then when Jeanette offered or asked for me to join this group, having so much respect for Jeanette and the way that she was putting this together, I was like, okay, I think this is, it's important to have the conversation about, it's important to have the conversation about um, why the, the hyper fixation on yoga as an exercise and sort of the aesthetics of yoga and the appropriation of yoga, um, you know, it's, it's important to take that conversation and then move the practice deeper rather than just sort of stay on the sidelines and watch it happening. So in the last seven or so years, as I've stepped back from the practice, from the teaching of physical yoga, I've been teaching somatics and I developed a, a practice called um, the embodied life method, sort of pulling from my training as a, as a scientist with the scientific method and placing it into the body as a way of um, recognizing where our culture has effect on the body and then also then how the body can have effect on the culture. So when I teach somatics and then in the embodied social justice aspect, I'll be teaching on things like recognizing where different social privileges and different social identities come into play, things like whiteness in yoga, things like the sort of assumption of physical ability, the assumption of certain aspects around age, um, physical capability, uh, ableism in yoga, things like that, so that we can have a conversation about how that really limits um, what it is that we're able to do in yoga, and then from there, expand it outward, right? Because if we talk about how yoga, you know, if we are hyper fixated on the physical practice of yoga, then being able to touch your head to your foot or get your leg behind your head becomes the goal. And everyone in this group knows that that's not at all the goal, right? I've, I also, I mean, I was part of a circus for a long time and I love the people that were in circus, but I can definitely say that having your head, your foot behind your head doesn't have anything to do with your spiritual progression. <laughs> you know, it's just not, that's just not what they, what it's about. So I'm really looking forward to having conversations about um, how we can re-enter into the body in a way that is accessible to more than just the already flexible and sort of um, the people that have the class and um, and wealth privileges that allow them to take classes and trainings while also accepting that, you know, as someone who's had the, the ability to take classes and trainings, it's my responsibility to share what I've been able to learn. So I'm very excited to be in, a, in this group and to be offering um, what I know as part of this training. And thank you so much, Jeanette, for having me. Um, thank you, Jeanette, for inviting me. I um, came to yoga after a, a, a decade um, teaching fitness, I just realized. I can't do this forever. I'm going to, I need something to balance this out. <laughs> that has kind of been my um, philosophy ever since this idea of, and then learning more through yoga and Ayurveda, um, just this lens of do different. So when I, in, in, in myself um, or with someone I'm working with, when you kind of see where they're on the continuum, it's then just finding ways to invite and provide opportunity to do different than that. So um, if it's a lot of sort of uh, heavy exercise, like for sort of yoga, bringing in some places where they can have restoration, something that's maybe coming off an injury and has been doing a lot of resting, figuring out ways to bring in some more vigorousness to their their system in a way that's available. Um, I'm going to kind of be teaching about the foot um, and then how that relates to our breath and our pelvic girdle and our shoulder girdle. And um, I, I kind of think of the foot as like a mini spine. Um, <laughs> and 
so it was an area that in my yoga teacher training, my 200 hour, and then also in the yoga therapy program I did, that we didn't get into the foot very much. And it's been a place that's had a profound impact on myself and then just understanding that we're a nomadic species and how um, gait relates to our evolution and our sense of safety within the nervous system. So kind of pulling a lot of bigger concepts into the microcosm of the foot and then from the microcosm of the foot, zooming out um, is what I'm really excited about uh, sharing and, um, and, and getting into with, with um, your program, Jeanette. So thank you. This is for you. If you are a teacher who's ever felt like you didn't have adequate tools to accommodate for everyone in your class and that your tools were not variable or adaptable enough to suit the people that were participating and that you had that circumstance that's so common where certain people are left out and you don't really know how to accommodate for that or offer alternatives, this is for you. So I personally have three guiding principles. One is that I want to teach yoga, yoga that is rooted in the teachings and the traditions. And I want to be able to teach it in a way that's accessible to anyone who's in attendance that day in my classes and in a way that's sustainable and minimizes uh, injury to the very lowest degree that it can. When I was first teaching, that was my intent all along, but didn't quite have the tools for that. People were being left out. Things weren't quite working. So over time, I developed what are the necessary steps and a way to identify the missing considerations that are causing poses and classes to be less accessible and less sustainable than we would hope. When I developed all that and had a plan and a roadmap, D2R was birthed. So what D2R will teach you how to do is to take any given pose, to dismantle it down into its components, to inspect those components for what may be inaccessible or unsustainable, to look at the intent and purpose that that particular pose or activity was being used for, and to recompose or reconstruct a pose or many different variable pose options that all meet that intent and original expectation, but that remove the limitations and the unsustainable components that existed beforehand. That's the way it works. And at the end, you will have a widely diverse toolkit to pull from where over time, and it takes time, and that's the good part, over time, you'll be able to adapt to exactly who's in front of you that day. So if you've ever wanted to make your classes or your practice truly accessible to you, to the people in front of you, and to be able to adapt and accommodate the people that are there so that they can have a really rich relationship in an individual way to yoga, this is for you. I promise that's the outcome. Join me for DCR.